Good afternoon. The uh, first industrial revolution has afforded us the ability to mass produce anything we wanted. We could produce an item 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times, and we could do it with amazing consistency and quality. The, uh, as an added bonus, the more we create it, the cheaper it got. You know, the, the problem with that is that uh, if you create, you know, 100,000 pair of shoes, not everybody wants the same pair of shoes. So we would end up creating a heck of a lot more than what we needed. And then we would spend huge marketing dollars to try to sell you what you don't really want. <laughs> so that is definitely an issue. What, uh, what do we do about this? And also, what do we do about the waste being created with all this energy of hauling all this stuff from place to place and then to finally to the dollar store and then to the dump? Um, we need to eliminate a lot of that uh, problem. This is a very, re very reactive process. And um, I can tell you that for the first time in the history of mankind, we have a convergence here that's happening between the mechanical age brought to us by the Industrial Revolution that liberated our muscles, it liberated our, our uh, uh, bodies to go beyond the, the, the limits of what we could produce with our hands. And then we have the digital age that uh, with, the, with the rise of computers, now we could store, say, massive amounts of information into these data banks that we, we could retrieve in the blink of an eye. And now we have a convergence of the two. And uh, this convergence is in the process called 3D printing. And um, for some of you are going to say, what is a 3D printer? And I'm glad you asked. I actually got one here to show you. So this is a 3D printer. This uh, is a 3D printer manufactured by our company, Machina Corp here in Edmonton. Um, it is a mid-range uh, consumer-grade printer. It's about $2,000. We have smaller than this, we have bigger than this. And uh, how does a 3D printer work? <laughs> um, a 3D printer works, um, if, you, if you were to imagine if a hot glue gun and a photocopier would get together and have babies. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like that, where you have the ability to take a computer-generated program and make identical copies of it. With the same process as with a hot glue gun, you could just keep adding um, material that you've melted. And really, the fancier your hot glue gun, the fancier the materials that you can melt. And from here, you can go all the way up to half a million dollars, where you can, you can melt glass, you can melt uh, medical-grade plastics, you can melt uh, titanium alloys, aluminum, anything you can imagine. And uh, yes, you can even 3D print organs. Now, uh, how does this uh, technology really uh, help our manufacturing process? And I'm going to give you an example. In the aerospace industry, there's something called a, um, uh, there, there's a metric called the buy-to-fly ratio. And this is a ratio of the weight of the materials procured to the weight of the materials that end up flying. And uh, a couple of years ago, the, uh, the, the ratio that was uh, reported across the board in North American uh, companies, like Boeing and Lockheed, would be about uh, 12 to 1. What does that mean? That means that you have to buy 12 kilograms of aluminum, and only one of them will end up on the airplane. That means 11 kilograms end up on the cutting floor. 11 kilograms. That is staggering. That's over 90%. And can you recycle this? Yes, you can recycle it without a problem. But now you have to put it in the truck, send it back to the shipyard, send it back across the ocean, melt it, and now you hold them back. And all that energy is wasted. Okay? Uh, this is also a very reactive process. We create the problem, and then we try to figure out what do we do about it. <laughs> you know, um, enter 3D printing. Within 3D printing, the 3D printing gives us a near net manufacturing process. What does that mean? That means that you buy one kilogram, one kilogram flies. I mean, that's very easy accounting. I mean, I could be an accountant if, I, if everything would be like that, you know? 
That's, that's very, very easy. Um, and, this is, uh, of, of, and this is very, very important. This is a proactive process. We don't create the waste, and we don't waste the energy. I mean, the energy that we, uh, we, we use to, to manage all of that waste, to haul all that stuff around, is just staggering. All of a sudden, we've eliminated all that waste. And this is happening. This is not, I'm not talking about Star Trek, I'm not talking about even right now, this has been going on for some time in the industry. So then you say, okay, that's what the big companies can do with a half a million dollar uh, printers. What can small companies do? Let me tell you, I'll, t I'll tell you a story. When we launched our X-Series printers, we want to showcase the size of what you could, you could uh, create with our printers. Size does matter, you know? So we do have smaller printers, but we also have bigger, much bigger printers, you know? So we want to show what can you do mid-range in one piece. So then we commissioned a company out of uh, Netherlands called Euro by the Mini Design. And uh, we asked them, look, we want to create some art, you know, some maybe like a, a, a desk uh, art, so you can put some crayons in it, some, a cup probably. And we wanted a Canadian motif, obviously. It was Canadian or something with oil, but then we went with Canadian first. <laughs> and uh, we sent them a picture of a Canadian flag, and we sent, we want this Canadian flag embo embossed on, on a cup. And it's got to wrap all the way around, and it's got to go at an angle kind of thing. And they, they said, sure, absolutely no problem. Four days later, we had a render, and then we said it was great. We had a digital file, we paid them, you know. By the fifth day, we printed two copies of um, our cup, and then finally, we printed this. And this is the future of manufacturing. Now, let me tell you what happened there. This is the only one in the world. There's nothing like this in the world. Can you create more copies? Absolutely, that is the whole point. Can you make them look exactly like this? Absolutely, that is again the whole point. But we only needed one. We only needed one to show our point, right? And this, we actually went and we got some quotes to create this one item. It was le uh, over than 20 times less expensive than creating a mold and having this one item done. Not only that, then we went and we created, at, we, we printed this at 100%, 200%, and 300%. We don't need to create a separate mold for all of these. It's enough to create just one. You know, we have one master file, and we can send it to, every, uh, we can send it to an, anybody else. And what else happened there? You need to understand, somebody out of Netherlands, they've never met us, they, don't, they didn't even know who we, we were. You know, and probably this person, maybe they worked in their pajamas at one in the morning. I don't know and I don't care, you know? <laughs> the point is, they ended up with a product. They were part of our product design uh, life cycle, you know? And it could be a, 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 a woman, a mother on maternity leave. It could be a 19-year-old or a 60-year-old who's trying to slow down a bit in life. This democratizes any, uh, any, any mis misconceptions you could have. It could be a, a black man, a white woman, a, a Asian, doesn't matter. The point is, halfway across the world, this person knew how to design something that was going to be manufactured in Alberta, Canada. And that is great. Now, what can you do at home? How can this affect you at home? Well, first of all, if you can afford a Power Mac, you can afford one of these machines. Secondly, or two iPads, <laughs> you know, if, um, or I don't know, three Xboxes or something, you know, <laughs> or an Xbox and an iPad. Um, secondly, you can go and you can print yourself um, iPhone covers. You know, you can go and print yourself iPhone covers um, once a month. That's not good enough once a week. That's not good enough every day of the week. And not only that, you can use biodegradable material. All these colors that you see up here, they are done with biodegradable plastics. You can take it, you use it, you drop it on the floor and it breaks. You can put it in your compost or in your trash and it will decompose. You don't have to feel bad about the environment. You know? And that is amazing. You can go and you can create um, dolls, you can create robots, you can create replacement parts for your, uh, for your robots, you know, and then, you know, your kids are going to think that uh, you are a hero. But what if I told you that this is not the replacement part of, of a robot? This 
is a prosthetic arm for a child. Yeah, I got your attention now. Um, we commissioned um, a local company called uh, Primitive uh, Design Studios to create a prosthetic for us. We wanted a, pros a prosthetic for a nine-year-old child. And uh, we wanted to do something uh, reasonably fast, rough, and inexpensive. You know, so we went for the lowest common denominator into a prosthetic arm. So we wanted something that could be, uh, uh, could be posed, you know, so you can have some, some mobility in the arm, something that uh, you can actually put some cables in here. It, can, it would actually mark, uh, mount on your, um, uh, on your arm, and then if you move your arm, there's some mobility here, so the, you know, this doesn't just sit there limp. You know, and this whole process incidentally also took about five days and um, it cost about all in all with all the plastic because we printed a few of them. We printed also much finer, uh, much uh, finer looking uh, uh, pieces here and it cost us about $20 in filament. Now think about it. How, what is more custom than the human body? Nothing. It's the human body is 100% custom. Whether you want to create a prosthetic for you, and then you know, your body changes, a child grows, and uh, the, the cost outside of Canada for prosthetics is just staggering. It, 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 brings, it brings you to tears if you're a parent or you have anybody in the family that needs any kind of prosthetic. You know? And to, to have something like this available to you so you can um, you can work on it as a, as a parent, as a brother, as a sister, as a, a friend, to be able to help somebody else. It's just absolutely amazing. And then um, if, um, uh, you know, if, if, if that's not good enough, you know, you can go to something that engineers have done, and there are designs available for free, because this is such an emotional point in people's lives, that people who have been touched in one way or another by the need of, uh, of, of prosthetics, they have gone, they've put in the effort, and they put this on the internet, so you could, you could create very high-end prosthetic arms. If that's even not good enough, you know what you can do? You can go to uh, high-end shops, and you can have it done in titanium, you can have it done in aluminum, whatever your pocket can, uh, you know, will allow. And uh, if, if, if this is, again, not interesting enough for you, you know, I can tell you that first, uh, right now, for the first time in our history, we can also create very, very, very advanced prosthetics. Because now we can create the porosity on the prosthetics that we require for the human body to accept uh, an orthopedic implant, or if you need a, a, a you know, partial skull replacement, or, or your jaw redone. Scientists at Cornell University right now can 3D print with stem cells directly on your spine. Stop for a moment and think about it. This is all you're printing it on one of these plates. Imagine that you have a degenerative spinal cord disease and you have to be operated on. And you have to, you go into an operating room, they set you up on the table, and then a 3D printer comes and 3D prints stem cells on your spine. How amazing is that? It takes about two weeks for the body to assimilate the stem cells, and after two weeks, you're the proud owner of a new spine. This is the future of manufacturing. Now, I'm going to tell you You guys need to go out there and, and really think how much this liberates us. You got to go out there and realize that our children, when they learn to create something like this, to create toys, and then they, they see them take shape on a 3D printer at home, they're working on the future. They're not going to be constrained to think, oh my god, I have to create something. How do I do it? We are liberating everybody who has access to this technology. As the great artist uh, Michelangelo used to, uh, used to say that, you just need to liberate something that lives inside a piece of marble. He used to say that sculpting is not taking away, uh, it's, not, uh, it's, it's not modifying, it's not, um, it, it's not uh, 
you know, working so much with the stone as much as just liberating the idea that was already inside. And, uh, you, you know, he said that we as, as uh, humans, we just struggled to liberate what was already in our minds and we were limited by our physicality, by our minds, by our bodies. And uh, this endless struggle between man and the elements was his, uh, the leitmotiv of Michelangelo's sculptures. And for the first time in the history of mankind, we are at a point where we can dream locally and have our ideas materialize globally. And this is the future of manufacturing. Thank you very much.